Wales a land of mountains? Or is it? Rather, it's a land of hills with a few mountains peeking up above this forest of hills. 136 to 188, depending on how you count it, because they're so low, most of them peak just a few meters up above the hills. However, some of you have asked me to make a video explaining Welsh place names, and I thought showing you some of these mountains is a good way to do that. This is Benjamin, so we're looking at mountains, and I'm showing you what they mean in Welsh. So that's what this video is about. Let's jump in. The first one is the tallest one, Rwydva. Now, the most important thing about this, I think, rather, is the legend around it. But before we get to that, Rwydva has a couple different potential meanings. Gwydd is a carnet or a carn, a burial carn, and ma, attaching to a noun, becomes va. Urwithva, and the ur is an article indicating the, showing you that it's a specific one. Urwithva, the burial place, literally, the burial mound. Now it could also mean that place from which you can see far off. That's that's less likely, but it's possible because this word is so old. Now the legend attached to this. It's about Rita Gaur, and this giant had a robe of beards from kings and princes that he slew. And he wanted King Arthur's beard, and they battled atop the mountain, and King Arthur won, defeating this giant, and heaped the stones over this giant and became the mountain. So that's interesting. Also one fact about this Urwithva is that you can see Scotland from this place. In fact, it's the longest distance on this island where you can see another part of this island. So Scotland has a mountain there, Merrick, which Clearly comes from a British source rather than Germanic or Irish. So Merrick and Welsh would be Merig, Merig. So that's interesting. Let's get into the next Welsh mountain. This one is called Castell y Gwent. Castell y Gwent. Literally, the castle of the wind. And you can see here it looks a bit like a castle. It's in the Gladerai of Gwynedd and Eryri. Castell Gwent. Further to the south, you have Robach Fawr in southern Gwynedd. And I chose this one because this RH at the beginning is key to understanding bits of Welsh around the language. Sometimes that article, like you saw with Urwydva, connects to a vowel, an open vowel, like O, and seals to the word and creates one word over time. Like Aroiv, that which has gone became was, that which was, Aroiv. And what this Robach is, is er gobech It's feminine, so the G drops off. Arobech. Robech, over time. And this literally means saddle, because it's shaped a bit like a saddle, but we don't tend to use that word so much today. We use more kavroi. But it's important that we remember these old words and understand what they mean in our language. You'll see a few mountains around Wales, beginning with kadair, chair of. So I chose this one of those, Kader Berwin. And 
these ones with Chadair are usually attached to some kind of mythology. So that's exciting. So Chadair Berwin means the chair of the Bre of Gwynap Neath. So let's break down what does that mean. So Bre is an older word for a high hill and Gwynap Neath was the king of not quite the underworld but the fairy folk kind of thing. Tulwith Teg, we call it. It's not quite fairy folk, but that's the closest equivalent in English, I suppose. So the chair of the mountain, really, of Gwynapneath, the king of the fairy folk. That's interesting. Let's go to the next one. So what about the south? Down here in the southeast, we have Manith Penaval. Manith Penaval. Now, I chose this one specifically because we need to get used to using the Welsh name again for it. I'm not going to say the English name, I'm just going to... Yeah, let's not use that because... It's just really an imposition. Penaval is very old. It literally means head of the cape draped down, a draped down summit. But Val is feminine, it comes from Baal. Pena, and then it mutates from Pena Baal becomes Penaval. And this is not a usual word that we would have now. It shows us that it's very old. Also in the south, Ros Dirion. Ros Dirion. Ros is like an upland, a heath, a moorland. Usually a bit wet. And Tirion, not Dirion. Tirion is gentle. Not soft, but yes, gentle. Tender. It's tender, that's the word I was looking for, tender the tender upland meadow. Still in the south, Penavan is the biggest of Banabachinog, the range of mountains. And Penavan means the head of the Banai, literally, the, the Ban, singular, meaning, well, a summit, a mountain, a peak. And this is probably a much older word than Manith. So that's interesting. Moving on. The river Havran is quite a long river and it begins just underneath Pim Limon in mid Wales. Now this one is unique because it's really a collection of five peaks sticking up out of one mountain. And what this means is five chimneys. The older Welsh word for chimney was Chimon. Pim Limon, five chimneys. The highest of these is Pen Pimlomon Vaur. Big head of the five chimneys. And you get Pen Pimlomon Vaur. Small head of the five chimneys. <laughs> what surprises me about Pim Limon is how featureless the landscape in that area is. Good for seeing stars though. Next one. Back to the Banai of Brchenyog, Picus D. Now, this is a bit peculiar. I know the last part, D, is black. But Picus is a bit more vague. To me, it sounds like a plate you pick at, like little bits of food, and that's one meaning of Picus. So, Maybe people thought it looked like an old crusty black piece of bread that you pick at. If you know what picus means more, let me know. It could mean like pick, you know, like a pitchfork of some kind, maybe. But this area is quite beautiful. Back up north, pen a rach. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Pen Rach. 
the head of the Slippery Witch. And it's interesting because the back of it is facing north and it's very long and broad and water collects there. And Heather Grach means the Slippery Witch. It would be very apt for the landscape, I suppose. For the witch, I suppose. Maybe there's some folklore. If you know any, let me know. Tala Mignev. Well, that's... That's a... Tall is like a head upland. But Mig, Megan is like swamp, marshland. The upland of the marshes, because it's plural. Literally, the high extremity of the marshes. Sounds better in Welsh, doesn't it? Next one. Money the Jerusicoid. Money the Jerusicoid. The mountain of the woods door. Or the, the door to the trees. Hmm. That's nice. And there's a there's a boch there. There's a gap where you can go through and it would have been a forest. So that's it makes sense. Welsh place names are very descriptive of their locale, into that which they fit. That's one thing I, I admire about it. Let's go onwards. A knecht. Look at the shape of this, it's distinctive. Knecht. That's a very odd sound in Welsh, and there's a reason behind that. Because there's a legend behind the name. So there was a Saxon knight who came in and he came into that area and made a name for himself. According to what I, I knew a guy who told me this in a pub, but if you have a different story, let me know. I'm sure there's several, but apparently he made a name for himself locally and he was slain after some adventure near the bottom of Knecht. And he had the helmet, like a knight's helmet that took the name to his memory. And at that time in Saxon, you know, in English today, you say knight for K-N-I-G-H-T, but it would have sounded more like Knecht Aristotelum a long time ago. And it's interesting that Welsh kept this sound and English lost it. So it's clearly from before that sound shift happened. Well, those are just a few of the many, and I tried to select a wide selection, including the essentials. So sorry if I missed out your favorite. Let me know in the comments if you have any specific Welsh Mountain that you like best. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Diolch to my Patreon.